morning, friends. Uh, Dr. M. P. Narayanan, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, Sambhut Singh Ji, Mr. Sharma, uh, all our friends. Uh, it is indeed very appropriate that ELETS and the Ego Magazine are organizing this uh, conference on on secure IT and to deliberate on the issue as to how we secure our infrastructure, how we secure our cyberspace, how we secure our applications. It's, it's very, very relevant. See, the more we get connected, the more vulnerable we become from the cyber threats. If it was all islands of, you know, uh, computers, each doing its own things, then uh, because they were not connected, so therefore there would have been much less threat. The threat would have certainly existed, but only from the persons who are using those systems. But now everything is connected, therefore it becomes very, very important. And the connectivity is not only extending to things which are normally, you know, uh, innocuous in nature. Critical infrastructure of our country is connected now. The railways are, are connected, the civil aviation is connected, so everything is, is connected. And and uh, irrespective of the fact, even, even the oil drills, for example, in the offshore, uh, whatever we are doing, that's all. Now more and more of IT is going into these, these kinds of uh, systems and processes and things. So therefore, it becomes very, very important because uh, banking, for example. Now banking is one of the most critical infrastructures. Now banking is, is every, every individual, every person who has an account is able to do banking through the internet. And therefore, the only way for the banks is while they have the core banking system, there is also a need to expose that system to, to outside world so that everybody is able to do transactions. Now, if everybody is able to do transactions, obviously this system becomes open to that extent. And if there is a, let's say, threat, if somebody can, can just attack that system, and somebody can attack the system so that the whole thing breaks down or the whole thing just comes down, then you can imagine if the entire banking infrastructure comes down, what will happen? So today, I mean, initially when we, it all started on the cyber you know, threats, it was just some people who were hacking systems just to prove that they could get into the systems. There was no motivation as such. The motivation was merely a thrill. Thrill that I have you know, got into NASA systems or I have got into, I got into the SBI system. Thereafter, people started doing economic crimes. They started, you know, sort of stealing the passwords and usernames and, and somehow, you know, sort of uh, do some financial kind of crimes. So that was another stage. And of course, then the system people started breaking down the system just to, uh, you know, espionage kind of uh, uh, applications where people were trying to steal information. So people would go into Pentagon website and, you know, they find out the secret there, that's the third stage. And today we have a real cyber warfare stage where people are doing it just to, and, and there are countries who are training people in this area. And there are thousands of, you know, professionals who are being trained to do cyber attacks. So this has become actually, in some sense, a state policy. People may say that terrorism is not a uh, state policy, but cyber attacks and cyber Warfare is becoming a very powerful instrument of state policy for our countries. So therefore, the whole scenario is really pretty great in, in the sense of threats. Now, the only thing is you can't sort of, you, you can, cannot say that, no, I will close down my systems. Closing down the system is not a solution to this problem. Because, you know, one can always say that the best place for a ship to be is in the, you know, whatever, the Bandarga or South Africa. The, this, this is the best place for, safest place for the ship, but then the ship has to go. And therefore it has to be there and in the, in the sea and has to uh, sort of face all the threats. And therefore, I think what we need to do, we have to be ahead of the curve to see that we have all these systems, the best security systems which are available in the world, best practices which we do, and so that we are able to secure our infrastructure and our uh, sort of uh, resources and assets. This is very important. 
Unfortunately, this, you know, we, we, we are, as a, as a, you know, we have been believing that whatever I'm doing is, is okay, safe, nobody is, why should anybody, you know, try to attack it? And therefore we find that the systems are developed without specific, you know, protection of the systems of the vulnerabilities. And people say because nobody knows how the systems are developed and therefore it is secure. So we try to, you know, uh, have security to obscurity. Now that is not really a strategy, that is not something good which you should be doing. We have to and therefore we have, we are coming out with a policy saying that the system must be secure, but we will also have open source kind of stuff. Even the, even the, you know, sort of software which are proprietary and which are in some kind of proprietary language, we say we open them. So let these, let these softwares be their, their bugs be found out, so that it is not security through obscurity, but security through this kind of sturdy nature. And as you know, all the operating systems and all the systems which are in open source are much more secure than the systems which are, you know, closely done and then they, some vulnerabilities are found and nobody knows about these vulnerabilities and vulnerabilities are extracted. So that, that actually has to change. Uh, what we are doing at the Government of India level is A, we have said no software which is which is not certified for security. The basic, you know, the basic coding, the basic the way it should be done, it has to be a secure and safe system. Secure and safe not only from the outside threat but its own. It should not actually become insecure in its own uh, design. So that's that's one thing. We are uh, creating, uh, you know, sort of institutions which at the national level will ensure that we have those, uh, our infrastructures are secure, so we are creating what is called National Cyber Coordination Center, that is a part of the Digital India program. In fact, one of the attributes or one of the uh, sort of statements of Digital India, powerful statement, is we must have a safe and secure cyber space in the country. And that will happen uh, only when we have, you know, we have to be ahead of the curve, we have to have very proactive uh, sort of steps we should take to, to secure our infrastructure, so we are having this uh, National Cyber Coordination Center. We also are uh, putting up uh, uh, what is called the malware and botnet uh, cleaning systems. So we will run these uh, this system against all our critical infrastructure and other systems of the government to say, uh, to, to ensure that they, they are able to clean the malware and, and those other uh, kinds of systems. We are going to have a safe and secure email so while we will have to continue our journey towards digital India, digitizing the entire workflow in the country, digitizing all the documents in the country, our initiatives of electronic signatures on demand, all our infrastructure, bank accounts, all those things will continue to go on. We will be very, very clear in our approach that all these steps or all these things which are being done are safe and secure. So this is this is very, very important and we are uh, fully conscious of the need to have security. However, there is a larger need for me people becoming aware of this, this security threats. Unfortunately, the awareness is, is lacking and therefore we have a, uh, a program, Information Security Awareness Program. That program is running and we are running this program in the schools and institutions where we are giving absolute modules of these courses as to what are the safety measures that one should take to ensure that our country remains uh, safe and secure from the cyber attacks and security threats. We have also, uh, from this perspective, started a program called Secure Your PC, that is a website, the portal, which actually enables that you, you can just plug in your PC, connect the PC, and then this will do a, a scanning and and so threat uh, uh, testing, that is another program which we are, uh, we are doing. Uh, the whole idea is that even, even all those software which are in capacity building of our own people, so that when they write software, they write a safe software, they write a secure software. That's another program. So we are uh, certainly uh, trying to be ahead of the curve, trying to uh, ensure that we have integral protection systems, we have integral prevention systems, we monitor the network for any unusual activities. So all those, uh, you know, sort of a lot of things are going on. Nevertheless, the need 
to, to remain ever vigilant because security is something which cannot be sort of, you know, I write a software and it's all uh, prevented. The other day when the Prime Minister was standing in NASCOM, he emphasized the fact that the cyber security is one of the most important areas which is going to come up in, in tomorrow's world. And therefore, if somebody could kind of you know, develop some systems which could say that now your systems are safe and you can sleep peacefully, that would be certainly a very ideal situation. But, but that ideal situation is really difficult to achieve because the threats are also continuously developing, evolving. And therefore, one cannot have a permanent solution, so to say, for this. But nevertheless, the combination of things certainly we should, we should work in this area. There are many countries in the world, Israel, for example, has worked hugely in this, in this uh, cyber security area. And I think we need to learn from them. We need to also develop our internal capacities. And I think there should be some courses also, the computer science programs. If, if I remember, I also did my computer science about 12 years back, not long ago. And, and I, I, I found that the only course which we had was cryptography. So cryptography is only the, the, the sort of course which was introduced in the master's program. So now I think there is a need to have much more courses also which should uh, deal with the latest techniques, latest threat kind of things. So there also there is a need. So there is a need to uh, educate the academic world, sort of create new courses where there is a need to have such conferences which, which actually deliberate on the issue of cyber security, especially the defense area and the policing area, because this is, these are our critical kind of infrastructures, and there, there we need to really ensure that we are uh, fully, you know, many times people think that whatever we have done, you know, our old mindsets are also very, you know, uh, very, very uh, responsible for these kinds of things. In our old mindset, what is the security? Security is, uh, you know, 20 policemen arrayed in one line, that's security. But then we forget electrons don't really look at these policemen, you know, electrons just move away without even telling anybody as to what, what they're going to do. And therefore, we have to change that, that mindset also. We have to be aware. And in fact, uh, one of my professors, he was a, a security person and he, he used to tell me that today there were 180 attacks on the system. And this is what I'm talking about 12 years back. Attacks, the children attacks on the system. So once you start detecting these things, once you start to some systems which will find out whether there are attack, attempts taking place, you will find that you know it's not a it's not a calm and peaceful world. It may appear from outside, but but inside there are in these you know routers and the systems and the bandwidth uh, things, optical fibers, lot of stuff and lot of threatening stuff is going on. And therefore, we need to be continuously alert to that reason. I, uh, I think uh, Ravi and, and Dr. Narayanan and all these people of Elites Media and Liga have done a wonderful job. And uh, as, as Dr. Narayanan was saying, it is the sixth uh, conference in the series. And I think more and more such conferences must take place, which should make people aware. And not only aware, but also the professionals must become much more attuned to the latest uh, sort of techniques and, and security uh, things. Uh, I wish all this uh, very best in this conference and I'm sure the deliberations which will take place will really uh, pave the way for a better and secure India. Thank you very much.